All right, I'm going to show you guys how to solve this homogeneous differential equation. And the deal is that we will first isolate the dy dx on one side and put everything else on the other, right? However, this is what they give us, but it's okay because we can first move this to the right hand side and it becomes negative though. And then we can go ahead and divide dx on both sides and then divide this on both sides. And you see that I distribute the negative into the parentheses, so we will have negative 3x squared right here. And then negative times negative becomes positive y squared. And then over this, which is xy minus x to the third power, y to the negative 1. But what is y to the negative 1? It's the same as 1 over y, right? So technically, this is a complex fraction, which is no good. Let me fix that first. To do so, let's go ahead and multiply the bottom and the top by y. Okay, y to the first power. Because you see, y to the first power times y to the negative 1 power, they cancel each other out, right? And of course, we have to do the rest. y times this is negative 3x squared times y, and then y squared times y is y to the third power, and then y times this is xy squared. At the end, you see this and that will cancel, so we just have the minus x to the third power. And then you see, we will have the dy dx isolated, and this is what we have on the right-hand side. And as I told you guys that, this is homogeneous, right? To see that this is indeed homogeneous, let's try the following. So the idea is that, let's look at this and look for the highest power of x. In this case, the highest power of x is x to the third power right here, right? And the idea, the strategy is that, let's go ahead, divide everything by x to the third power. So right here, let me just divide this term by x to the third power. And then we do the same for the rest. Right here, divide everything by the x to the third power. Do the same right here. Divide this by x to the third power as well. Okay? And then you will see, here we have negative 3 right here, but this is x squared over x to the third power. That means we have an x in the denominator. We still have the y on the top though. So that means we will have this right here to be y over x with a negative 3 in the front. And then for this term, you see we add y to a third power over x to a third power. We can write it as y over x first and then raise to a third power. And then for this, x over x to a third power, it's x squared in the denominator, but then we have y squared on the top. So we can rewrite this as y over x first and then squared, right? At the end, we'll have a minus and then x to a third power over x to a third power is just 1. So minus 1 right here. And now you see, this right here, we were able to rewrite the right-hand side into an expression in terms of just y over x. y over x has to be together like this, right? If this is a situation, we can try the following. This is the substitution that we're going to do. We are going to pick another variable, and usually we use v. We let v equals to the input, which is y over x. So we let v is equal to y over x, the input, all right? And then the idea is that we have to also get dy dx in terms of dv dx. And perhaps let's just go ahead, multiply x on both sides. That means y is equal to v times x. And then let's look at this, differentiate both sides. The derivative of y is just dy dx. But on the right-hand side, we have a product of two things, right? So we are going to use the product rule. So we keep the first and multiply by the derivative of x, which is 1. And then we add it with the second function, which is x. And we multiply by the derivative of v, which is dv dx. And now we are going to use these ingredients, plug into here, and then rewrite this differential equation in terms of v, dv dx, and also x. So on the left-hand side, instead of dy dx, we will have v, right? v times 1 is just v, and then plus x dv dx. This right here represents dy dx. And then this is equal to, I will change all the input instead of y over x into v. So on the right hand side, we will have negative 3 v, right? And then plus v to the third power, and then all over v squared, and then we have the minus 1. And now, let me tell you, this is guaranteed to be separable. So you see, this right here is v plus this term. So let's go ahead, minus v on both sides. And this is what we have, isn't it? Well, on the right-hand side, we are subtracting fraction with v. 
Let's just get the common denominator so we can combine fraction and see what do we get from there. So the common denominator will just be v squared minus 1. So right here, let me just multiply the bottom and the top by v squared minus 1. So I'll do the same right here, v squared minus 1. And let me just distribute this as well. But be sure you account for the negative sign as well. Negative v times v squared is v to the third power. Negative v times negative 1 is plus v. And then you see positive v to the third power, and this is technically the negative, right? Negative v to the third power. This two cancel out, right? This is negative v times v to the third power is negative v to the third power. This and that cancel out. And then negative 3 v, negative negative was plus, right? Negative 3 v plus v becomes negative 2 v. And this is what we have on the top. And the denominator stays the same. So now, we have x times d v dx is equal to negative 2 v over v squared minus 1. So of course, I can just multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So we have v squared minus 1 over negative 2 v, right? And then let's keep the d v on the left hand side. And let's multiply dx on both sides. In the meantime, let's divide x on both sides. So this x becomes 1 over x on the right hand side now. All the v's and dv's are together, and all the x and the dx are together. So of course, this we separate the variable, and then we can just go ahead and integrate both sides. On the left hand side, to integrate this, let's split the fraction. So all I did was v squared over negative 2 v, but then v squared over this v is just v on the top, right? So we have v over, well, negative v over 2 like this. And secondly, we have negative 1 over negative 2 v, so that's plus, negative negative become plus, 1 over 2 v, like that. So I have to separate the fraction like this. And then let's talk about integration right here. I haven't done any integration yet. It's just splitting the fractions. All right, anyways, here, this is v, right? v to the first power, so we're going to add 1 to the power and then divide it by 2, right? So we have uh, negative 1 over 4 in the front, and then v squared. And then let's keep the 1 half down first, because this is just, you know, write down the 1 half, and then the integral of 1 over v is just ln absolute value of v. And then this is equal to ln absolute value of x, right? That's the integral of this. And then we put the plus c on the right-hand side. All right, so this is pretty much it, isn't it? At the very end, what is v? Well, refer back to this. v is equal to y over x. So I'm just going to rewrite everything back wherever I see v. I will put it down as y over x. So I have to do that right here. I also have to do that right here. And as long as you put this down the test, uh, you pretty much can get full credit because uh, there's no rules in the sense of like how much you have to do next to simplify uh, this answer. But I think this is pretty legit. And with that being said, that's it.